Okay, check, check. Nice, just check in. Can everyone hear me? Okay, sweet. Nice, all right, cool. Sorry, I'm just figuring out how to, it's been so long since I've streamed. What's up, you guys? Hello. We can hear the check checkers. Good stuff. Okay, cool. Um, hello, everyone. I am Demo Tapes. <laughs> I am live here from my studio in San Francisco. Um, I'm super excited. Thank you so much to Bitbird for having me. For those of you who don't know me, um, I was on uh like I started this project in 2020 and I was on create together volume two um, with a bunch of absolute legends and yeah I'm just a bit bird a bit bird stan um, and yeah I make music I live in San Francisco um, what we are going to talk about today is like texture and atmosphere and how to like use sonic textures in your composition because I think it's like one of the most underrated and interesting parts of music and am I still going okay good just making sure I'm still going um yeah so like I listen to obviously a lot of electronic music I also listen to a lot of ambient music and I think like merging the kind of like where those two worlds meet each other is some of the most interesting stuff and adding and layering things that are not like the main character of a song is to me how you get some of the most like interesting um, stuff. So got a little agenda here for us that we're going to go over. So I'm going to start off with just like talking about like the purpose and like components of texture. Um, I'm going to show you guys some finished examples of stuff that I've made. Um, and then we're going to create a texture idea from scratch. So we're just going to cook for a little bit and I'm just going to show you some context for that. Um, and then I'm going to show you some texture in like a finished song idea. Um, and then at the end, we'll get into some like Q and a stuff. Um, obviously you guys can ask questions as we go to like, would love to have kind of back and forth, but I'll kind of wait until the very end of the stream to do like a big Q&A, but um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so like the, the way that I always kind of like explain this and the way that I like to think of it is like you have a room or like any sort of physical space, right? You have like the main things that you see when you first look at that room. You've got like the couch, like how the furniture is set up. You have like the structures, the physical structures, the walls, the windows, everything. Um, and I like to think of those things in like a song idea as sort of your like main character things, right? You've got like, this is the lead vocal chop in the drop section that is kind of like driving the energy, or this is like the vocal in a pop song is like the main character, right? It's the couch in this context. Um, when I think of like texture in building a song idea, I think of like adding things that are perceptible that you can like feel that aren't necessarily the main character, right? So like here in this room, looking at a photo of it, you can't really get a sense of like what it's like to be in that room, right? So like what does, you know, what's the air temperature? What does it like smell like in that room? What is the lighting? What time of day is it? like? All of that stuff is in, in a musical context is like things that you feel around a main idea, but, and to like add context and emotion to it without like being the main character. Um, so this is like how I like to think of it, right? And you can like look at different spaces, like different physical spaces, indoor, or outdoor, and kind of like imagine what it feels like to be in that space. To me, like creating texture is all about in a song idea is all about like 
trying to put someone in this physical space before they even hear like a chord or a melody or a uh, or a vocal. So um, this is also like super useful just in like the context of like song arrangement, right? Like you can take these ideas and use them as like an ambient intro for a song or you could use it as an outro or when you have a chord progression that's like changing throughout the song, your texture is kind of this like bed that provides like a constant for the idea. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like how I like to, I like to think of it. Um, the, as far as like the components, like the main things that I like to use when I'm making texture ideas, um, I like to use like some type of like ASMR sound. So like bird sounds, like nature sounds, just like what does what is the feeling that you're trying to convey with the chords and with the song as a whole? Um, layering in some type of like natural, whether you've recorded it or you've found it, and we'll go on this stream. We'll go into like kind of both of those approaches, like recording stuff from from your life and then recording stuff uh, or just like finding stuff online that you like. Um, and then I like to like think of kind of the juxtaposition of like organic and digital instrumentation. So like. Do we have saw waves? Do we have sine waves? Like, do we have like something that feels a little bit more digital? And then how are we like contrasting that with like recordings that you have, right? So um, whether you're like playing piano or playing guitar or whatever instruments you play, whether it's your voice, your singing, um, kind of like m the mixture of organic and digital instrumentation to me is what makes like texture sounds really, really interesting. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about like mixing, like basically thinking of your mix, like this 3d space, where is the texture sitting? Right. So like, is it in front? Is it like in your face? Is it kind of like in the back on the walls? Is it actually outside? And it's just giving you that feeling. So like thinking of your, of your mix as not just like panning left and right, but thinking of your mix as kind of like a 3D space and like where does everything sit in the in the 3D space is really helpful. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess I could talk a little bit at the beginning too just about like things that I like to use um, and we'll get, it's like more useful to get into this when we're actually like jamming on a project, but um, I like to use Serum. I like to use Wavetable. I like to use the Labs stuff a lot, like the Labs piano. Um, again, just like kind of creating that uh, balance of like organic stuff. Um, Omnisphere is really great as well. Um, and then combining that with effects. So like, I, I really like Echo Boy, but anything that I'm gonna use today, there is probably a stock equivalent to in your DAW. So don't get like, I don't want you guys to get super bogged down in like thinking that what I'm doing is like the right way. This is just like how I, how I approach it, right? So like, uh, if I'm using like plugins that you don't have or whatever, um, I'll try to contextualize those with like a, a stock equivalent because every DAW has a reverb, every DAW has a delay. Um, yeah. So cool. Is this, is this cool so far? Does this make sense? Like the kind of like intro here, like, um, feel free to ask any questions that you guys have. Um, and then I'm going to get into starting off with a couple of examples of like texture sounds that I've made. Cool, cool. Okay, cool. So let's start cooking. I haven't, uh, I haven't, I haven't made music on stream in so long. So if I, uh, if I train wreck today, that's the way it goes. But um, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is show you guys the um, a couple of like finished examples of textures that I've made. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to get into is like, when, when you're making these, you should be like compiling them in a way that you can go and like access them later. So like creating a little sample pack for yourself of textures is super useful to like have to like pull, uh, pull into new projects, just labeling them by like key and BPM. Um, shameless, absolutely shameless plug. I have also a sample pack company. So this is like 
my simple pack company is called Soundbox, and all of the packs that I make, this is like my favorite thing to do is have these little like texture things. Um, the goal of this is like, it's not the chords, it's not the melody, it's just a bed of tonal sound that, uh, that sits kind of under a chord progression. So I'll kind of get into this. The way that I like jam on these projects is I like to just arrange them and do like, all right, I'm going to make five that are in this key and this tempo. So for this pack, this is C sharp major and 100 BPM. And we're going to, I think we're going to do something kind of similar today. We'll just start in like E major. Um, but these are a couple of examples and I'm going to play through these real quick. And then I'm going to kind of talk about how I made them. That, that last one is my favorite too, I think. Um, yeah, so just talking a little bit about like the composition of these, and I think it'll be easier to get into kind of like making one from scratch, which we'll do next. But um, yeah, it's like basically just picking and kind of deciding what key and BPM you're going to be working in, um, and then using a combination of stuff that like feels organic with stuff that feels digital. And it's like a, I think it's like the most fun way to make music right because you're not like really worried about getting to the point of like the chord progression or the melody or the drop or like is this is this hitting the right way it's like it really is just like pure just like exploring sounds and trial and error so like sometimes I have really good days making these <laughs> and make really cool stuff and then sometimes I'm just like banging my head against a wall like making stuff that's like not working um but it's important with making these that you're not like over producing them and like overdoing them because the point of this in a song is to sit in context with other with like a chord progression right so if i make this like some crazy like complex like melodic thing or like if i make it really abrasive it's not going to work um as a as like a sample that you can layer so um, this one is just this Leco, uh, piano that sounds like this. This is a vocal that's kind of like holding down the like place that a snare would be like an up snare. And then this is a serum patch. Let's see what it is. It's just a serum pad. So it's kind of like. The fine tune here is kind of like wobbling around the fundamental. Um, and we'll get into this. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to bore the people that are really good with theory. And I don't want to like, uh, nerd out too much for the people that are like newer in like music theory, but basically like wherever we're starting. Um, so C sharp major is our, is our key here. So we're just like starting and holding this note at C major. And like a lot of the information that we have here is like kind of revolving around that, that fundamental. So, 
Um, we'll talk about that more though. When we... But yeah, so those are the basic components of this one. Um, and then whichever uh, other of these you guys want to look at them down to, but the last one seemed to be some people's favorite. I think that was my favorite as well. Um, yeah, this one's really beautiful. So a lot of this audio is stuff that I flattened um, that was in Granulator. This is actually another loop that I made um, that I put in Granulator and just like played the same note. And I'm move, it looks like the file position of the Granulator is moving, so. Here, obviously, I'm getting out some of the low end, and then I have Echo Boy just kind of um, widening it out a little bit. This is... <laughs> I have no idea. It's kind of funny looking back on some of this stuff. Like, I don't really remember how I made this, but it looks like there's a... Uh, LFO assigned to this octave so it's like you want some of this information to be really tonal and like kind of like sitting at the root note of the scale but then you want some of it to like sound a little bit weird so this is like pitch bending it's a uh, the same root note just pitch bending and sliding up and detuning so like this would be a really invasive sound I'm just kind of like tucking it under everything and then this we'll make like another example of that later but this is just kind of like a simple flute sound that's yeah so each one of these layers sounds like kind of nice on its own and could kind of work on its own but repetition's really good with these because you want them you don't want them to be like the main character right you want them to be just like um something that you can layer um and then we'll get into once we get into the example we'll kind of get into like building a song idea around these but yeah this is like i love this stuff this is like these are my favorite things to make uh because you're just exploring it's a very like meditative and like especially when you make electronic music i think you're oftentimes like worried about making like your drops impactful and like making sure your drums hit and stuff like that and having sessions where you basically just work on this kind of stuff is really like essential to like how I keep myself sane in the production process I feel like because I'll have a day where I'm like hey my goal today is to just make 10 pieces of like nice texture um so yeah let me know if you guys have any questions that like come up. Um, but we are now going to, uh, I'm going to start making one from scratch and we might do a couple of these. We'll kind of see how it goes, but, um, yeah, I'm going to start building a texture from scratch and we can go from there. almost creating a strong enough inspiration from the texture. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what like, uh, there's so much like cool sound design, like driven ambient music that I listen to that, you know, really just use, like just sounds like this stuff. <laughs> like I could listen to this all day, it's amazing. Um, but then when you, when you kind of layer that in context with like chords and when you start layering this in your tracks, like it just gives it such a cool, like such a cool, like new feel to it and again like you're if you think of the kind of like metaphor of physical space like this puts you these things put you in like a physical space right away so um cool so i'm gonna go through this and i'm gonna walk you through like my typical process again like this uh this is so different every time 
And sometimes you end up with cool stuff and sometimes you end up train wrecking. So hopefully this goes well. But, um, and this is my first time I've streamed in a while. So I'm going to try to like do my best to talk through this. Um, but I'm also just going to kind of go here. So this is the Jasno. Again, I like love these felt instruments plugins. Um, but if you don't have this, like any sort of like kalimba uh, sounding instrument that you have available in your DAW, or if you get one shot samples, like that's another great way to work. Uh, don't feel like you need to have any of the plugins that I'm using to make any of this stuff because it's it's doable without. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna start here. And so we're at 100 BPM. Um, I'm just gonna say, let's go A major. And the like nice little cheat code in Ableton is that you can click the scale button down here and uh, select your scale and then click scale up here. Um, I'm gonna turn the headphone icon on too so that I can preview. Um, I did this, I, this is like another fun little tangent, but I did this video last week where I just like resampled and I had the headphone uh, icon on and I just went like this. And like recorded all of that and then used that to like create a texture bed. So that's another really fun way to work. It's like super chaotic, but uh, that's another fun way to work. But yeah, big um, Ableton cheat code for Ableton people. I think FL already has this um, and I think they're making like an even better, better version of this in next Ableton, but um, yeah. So we're gonna cheat a little bit and we're going to right off the bat, just like snap it to scale and start playing around with just the, just the root note here with A. simple i'm going to maybe put a little bit of echo boy on this again any like stock echo would work the same here sort of eq as i go Maybe try a different. Oh, and I broke, I broke jazz now. Whoopsies. groundbreaking stuff here. Uh, Leco is like a piano sound, so I'm going to kind of maybe just do the same thing, maybe go down, I don't really know. We're just gonna explore. Sounds really heavy. I'm gonna get rid of the... really really basic really basic stuff here but i like getting just like a couple of pedal tones down that are like okay cool now we like have our key set we have like the foundation or like the fundamental and then we can get a little bit more like playful and experimental um the next thing that i like to do is like layer in noise i know this is like a funny like it's almost kind of like a trope or like a meme of itself at this point with like how like lo-fi producers use like, you know, it's just like ambient sounds, but like it really is like so, so useful, right? To creating like an emotional context. So I like to think of like, are we get, are we sad here? You know, like, all right, then we're gonna use rain sounds. Are we happy here? We're gonna use like bird sounds. Um, and I think one thing that can help make your music feel really personal is to like uh, bring just whatever you have with you, like whether you have a field recorder or whether it's just your phone and just start like recording the sounds of where you live. Like Bitbird people are all over the world. The city or the town that you live in is cool and has like its own sounds, whether it's like a more urban environment, you live in a city or you live like out in the countryside, like the, the Foley and like the bugs and like everything that you have around you is like 
unique and cool. And you should be bringing that into your music because it like will give it a more personal kind of like feel to you, right? You'll be like, oh man, that's like, I remember when I recorded that. Um, so yeah, I, I love like, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Isaac, the, the New York City, hey, I'm walking here. So for this, uh, I'm just gonna use some kind of like Rainier sounds and then like a tape noise layer. These are super loud right now. Oh, how's my, by the way, uh, how's my overall volume uh, here of the sound? Oh. But just let me know if like mic's too loud or anything relative to this. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. So this is super loud, like exaggerated example, but instantly we have like an, like kind of an automatic emotional context for this. Um, and my next like favorite thing to do is just adding kind of like a, what I would call like a broken or like an unresolved melody. So what I mean by that is we're not going to play anything that's like you can hum or you can sing, or that would be like the main melody of a song. We're just going to play around and like find notes that keep this idea moving and keep it interesting. And my favorite, uh, way to do this lately has just been using wavetable. So like, I just have like a basic shapes, um, little kind of decaying pluck in wavetable. And we're just gonna play around with that a little bit and like find some notes that we like. trying to be careful to not make this too much of a Ableton is too loud relative to the voice. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go and turn my master down a little bit. Um, actually, no, I can just turn my voice up a little bit. Okay, cool. Let me know if that feels a little bit better or if I should just turn Ableton down. So I, what I mean by like broken melody here is like we're not we're not really fully resolving this. It's just kind of like meandering. It's not like a really strong melody. You can still layer a bunch of stuff on top of this. Um, it's just like playing, playing around and kind of giving us a sense of space. And I might find, I might either duplicate this or find one more. This is the uh, Labs um, or Spitfire Intimate Piano. So I'm just gonna like maybe find one more idea here that I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna copy the same melody though. So volume's great now. Okay, great. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, so like, again, this is a pretty unscientific way of going about this. I also have like a hardware process for this too. So like I have a mini log, um, I have a Casio SK-1. Um, I have like other stuff that I like to do uh, doing this. And it's the same, it's the same idea. It's just like touching notes on your, that are in key in your scale um, recording those to audio and then kind of like arranging them in a way that's like interesting. But, um, again, at this stage, we're not trying to do anything too.
ever hit the... Okay, so I've got a couple questions here. Um, do you ever put the hits off time for a bit more swing? Yeah, for sure. Um, I have a mini log and love it. Would love to see you do a bit with that. Yeah, I decided I'm going to try to do everything in the box today just because I didn't, like, I assumed that most producers that are watching this are, like, you know, on, on the more bedroom side of things and, like, are just playing with plugins. So I'm going to try to keep it plug-in based today. Okay, cool. So I've got three things now. I have like a pedal tone that's like sustaining a note. I have a texture that's layered with that. And then I have like a broken or like kind of unresolved melody. And the fourth thing that I'll usually add at this stage is um, like a, some type of vocal idea. And I'll show you like how I use it. It's typically not for, it's typically not to like, have someone singing on something, but it's just to add like a more human like voice element to it. So um, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab a splice sample. I'm sure I'm gonna use something that uh, you guys have used a million times. So hopefully it'll be familiar. Oh yeah, perfect. We have the. Uh, a bit bird release with this. <laughs> um, so I'm just grabbing a couple. I'm looking in our key, which is A, and I'm just grabbing a couple of vocal samples that we can pull in. Cool. Um, nice. All right. So we've got a couple of vocal samples here, and now I'm going to start layering those in as well. There's a couple different approaches I can take here. I can just start like picking individual parts. The first thing that I like to do is to have something that's kind of doing a bit of a, uh, like kind of holding down a structure. Cause right now it, everything feels really unstructured and I'm going to do, something, I'm going to do something that is basically like hitting where a snare would hit or, or a piece of percussion. That's like giving us a sense that we're at hundred BPM here. So I'm actually just going to take this first because it feels like close to the root. So you see, like, I just kind of use this as like a... It's now, now your head's nodding a little bit, like along with it, because you like feel like there's a sense of, a, more of a sense of rhythm. Okay, cool. So um, what I would do normally here is start thinking about like, uh, Again, like if you think of a room and you think of like 3D placement in a mix, where is everything sitting? Like you want a couple of things to be like right here and feel like they're in your face. You want a couple of things to feel like they're like here on the sides. And then you want a couple of things to feel like they're um, in the back of the room, basically. Um, I, I feel like just the the like tone of these instruments, I'm already achieving that a little bit. Um, one thing that I might do is put um, like a reverb on some of these, just to kind of move them out into the stereo field a little bit. So you can hear the difference, right? We've Here we've got, and then we're, and then we're gonna send that out into like the back with reverb. I know there's someone watching on a phone speaker right now going like, yeah, I can't tell the difference, but it, there is a difference. <laughs> cool. So we have like, you know, it's kind of boring, but it's like kind of cool. Uh, it's a really good starter, right? And if we wanted to build something uh, in a, just from this, we totally could. But I know we can make this like more interesting. And this is where I'm, 
things are going to get like really chaotic and I'm going to start to go a little bit crazy with just like mixing and uh, duplicating layers. So this part of the process is like duplicating two or three of your favorite layers, adding a bunch of effects, and then freezing and flattening those in Ableton, which is just like resampling. It's like taking MIDI and committing it to audio basically. Um, so this is this process is where it starts to get get really fun. Um, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm going to put portal on this. Portal is like my absolute favorite. It's like a really simple granular. Uh, it's simple from like the interface perspective, granular pl plugin with like amazing presets. So cool. That's already kind of more interesting than the first one that we started with. Um, I'm just going to freeze and flatten this. And now we've got, I think a little bit more. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Cool. Like we, this already has like a different swing to it to me and feels cool. Um, doing a lot of like micro volume adjustments just to make sure that everything is kind of like sitting in a nice place relative to each other. I don't want anything like popping too far out. Yeah, Portal's great, man. I, I, I really love Portal. It's so good. Um, cool. So we're going to do the same thing with a couple of these layers. Um, other things that I like to use that are not Portal are um, like anything from Sound Toys. Uh, I really love Crystallizer, um, especially with some of these like um, more just like individual um, held notes. Like we'll take this piano that we started with. And um, just mess around with presets here. Sounds like a cash register. <laughs> this is my favorite preset. It's called Philip Glass Echoes. That's beautiful. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna freeze and flatten this just so that I've got it like in audio in a format that I can see. Sound Toys has a Black Friday sale. That is super good to know. Nice. Yeah, I would hop on it. If you guys like Sound Toys, it's amazing. Again, though, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to have certain plugins to like do this stuff. You can do this with everything stock in your DAW, whether you're in FL or Ableton. Um, but yeah, I really, really love Sound Toys. Nova 2, thank you so much. Yeah, let me know. If, is this fun so far, you guys? I'm having a good time. I could do this all day. I know it's not like making a drop, but... This to me is like the most fun part of the creative process. I love this stuff. Cool. Um, I'm going to take another, I, I want, what I'm craving right now is kind of like a hit at the beginning to like, let me know that the loop is starting and ending. So I'm going to take um, this wavetable instrument and I'm just going to kind of run up the I'm just going to kind of run up the scale. Okay. That's like a nice video game. You just completed the level type sound. Uh, and I'm going to throw an echo boy on this and just see how it sounds. I'm going to turn the feedback way up so that it's like ringing out.
cool. So maybe that'll be nice as kind of like a beginning part of this loop, we'll see. This is a little bit harsh in like the highs, like sometimes when you're adding a little bit crazier effects, they can kind of make it a little bit more dissonant. And again, as you go, you just kind of want to like look out for problem spots and EQ this in a way that you're like, I'm hearing one of these is like pushing a bunch of low information through. So I'm trying to find where that is. But like these are all nice individual samples, right? So it's fun because now I have like, this little melody is like so pretty and I feel like I could start a song idea just around that. Ah, I think that's our problem guy. Okay. I'm not sure the purpose that this is serving right now, so I'm gonna see if I can get something more interesting out of it. Um, and I'm gonna take Portal once again and just kind of go crazy on this guy. That's kind of beautiful. I'm not super like picky about these individually. I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna commit it to audio because ultimately what I can do is just have these and kind of like chop and delete parts and arrange them that way, you know? <laughs> texture building. Okay, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are liking this. This is my favorite stuff, man. I could just listen to this all day. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to find a couple more pieces of... Uh, I'm going to plug my phone in, and then I'm going to find a couple more pieces of like this vocal that we're going to use to make it a little bit more like fun and interesting, just because today we're just making this. So... Um, Loving the insight, I'm relatively ignorant in regards to the process. I've grown interest here as of late. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Good. <laughs> okay, sweet. I'm glad you guys are digging it. This is my first time streaming in so long, you guys. I was like, dang, I hope we're able to make something cool. Because sometimes you can train wreck on stream. This is pretty, though. Cool. So what I'm looking for here is I'm like, all right, this sounds like something that is really pretty and cr gives me a feeling and has a mood to it, but is not dominating the space. It's like, I, now I know that there's room to layer this. So um, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, but I'm also going to find maybe one more piece. I'm keeping all right. Maybe I won't use that loop just because everyone's it's very, that's a very rinsed loop. Cool. I'm just going to take like maybe three or four cuts at this and go like, let's see. Maybe here, here. Perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping it would sound like. Okay. So now we've got this. Have I listened to Pluko's Pull Me Closer yet? Yes. It's a great tune. 
he's been sending me that for as he's been working on it and it's an absolute bop shout out pluko also me and pluko have a couple of songs together if you guys have never if you guys are new uh are we okay on repeat awesome thank you so much Cool. So now we can, you can see how we could like, all right, we could actually fill this out and make something like this, like sort of a lead uh, or like a vocal chop that sits on top. Let's see. One thing about this process, it is tedious. <laughs> if it is anything, it is tedious. But that's why we love it. We love things that are tedious over here. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna blend this a little bit more now. I'm gonna use um, just like a stock Ableton reverb. interesting now piece by piece right um add some echo onto this so it rings out <laughs> hey Ben, thank you. Who let him cook? Who let him cook indeed? That is the question. This is sounding this is sounding really pretty and what i mean what i mean by like keeping making it so that it's not uh kind of like dominating the space and you still have a bunch of room on top of it we're gonna just kind of like as an example i'll show you i have this dx7 and you can see how easily like chord ideas fit on top of this Like that sounds that sounds really nice, but then we can also kind of like strip this and just okay, we're gonna jam on like two or three different chord ideas over the top of this, or bring in a sample that's in this key. Um,
okay, a little bit of a different feel, kind of more more upbeat on this one. Let's see. Um, Super loud. No drums. So right now we have, like, we have like a cool foundation for like two different song starters, two different chord feels with no drums. And we have like something that is kind of stands alone as like a sample, right? We could use just this. Um, we could use just this and pull it out of its context and like strip it for parts and use it in a new idea or we could pitch it up. Like right now we're at a hundred BPM. So Maybe we like writing stuff at like 135 or whatever. We could go up there. Um, there's sort of like endless possibilities once you've created these samples, and that's super fun. Um, So um, those are kind of like the basics of like starting a texture idea. A lot of the plugins that I like to use, you can see how this process, you can like kind of do this with whatever you have at your disposal. You know, if you're a really good piano player, maybe you're setting the, um, setting your iPhone up on your piano and just recording a bunch of like jams and riffs and putting them in Ableton and chopping them up like this. Um, the point of today was to show just like the process of making texture ideas, not writing a song idea. So um, I want to show you like a couple of things that are really fun to do with these sound design jams, basically, once you've started them. Um, and yeah, it's a really, I think to your point, it's like a really fun way to, to write a song because you're sort of backing into the idea instead of like, just starting with the, the kind of main thing. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of different things that I like to do with these ideas once I've started them. So I've, I've already have a couple of different chord ideas and I'm just going to just take the texture idea here and we're going to flip it two different ways. So I'm going to take it and resample it now. Um, so now we have the whole thing as a sample out here and we can go crazy with it. We can go down here in the clip editor and pitch it up. Or down. I actually love this pitch down. That sounds sweet. Yeah, that rocks. Okay, cool. So let's try to, um, I'm going to show you two different ways to flip this. I actually love this pitched down. Um, so I'm going to flip this two different ways. Okay. So now it's down four semitones. So it's in F major. 
I'm just gonna consolidate it here. Um, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put it in granulator. And we might speed. Yeah, let's speed it up, why not? Okay, I'm gonna take this whole sample. I just like consolidated it, froze it, flattened it, and I'm gonna drag it into granulator. And command shift M brings up a new MIDI track. I'm gonna play C because that's our that's our root note. And it's way too loud, I'm sorry. Okay, cool. So we're just gonna punch out a bunch of C notes and then we're going to move around the file position to start and see how it sounds. <laughs> okay, that already sounds really sick. <laughs> Um, cool. Uh, we can do two things. We can either click show automation and just automate the file position manually and kind of just like random draw it. That sounds way cool. I like that. Uh, and then I'm going to delete this automation though, and I'm just going to go back and do an LFO and map the LFO to the file position. So it's just scrubbing. So starting from this idea, we pitched it down uh, dragged it into a granulator and now we have two new samples from the same piece of like source material and we also have all the stuff back here that we can just go add in so we still have like this one feels like it's running all over the place a little bit so we can like bring in the pedal tone and pitch that up no down sorry down four Maybe our chords work here, I don't know. They might not. Um, I'm just gonna pitch these chords down so that they match the... This might sound bad, so. pretty i'm like i'm i'm okay with that <laughs> let's see let's try the other one that we wrote so yeah um someone said i thought you already made a song idea but then you just took it so yeah it's like this is just like infinite um recycling and resampling so we have our original here um but then we just also made two kind of like spin-off variations of it um endless endless fun because you just keep like recycling and you just take the parts that you like in a jam like this there's going to be some good bits and some bad bits and
cool. Um, one other technique that I like to use for this is to um, put this into like a simpler instrument um, or like whatever, whatever sampler you have in your DAW. Um, and then we have slice mode. Let's see, making sure that I already committed this to the pitch. Yes. Um, I'm going to make the... So same same idea here as the granulator. <laughs> yes, Bryce, so play. Oh my gosh, that's actually really pretty. Okay, let's get let's put one of these down because it's kind of nice. Um, I'm just play. I'm I'm just touching my MIDI keyboard down here. like that let's see So we've got a, just another way of flipping it, right? We have a simpler, like a sampler device. We took this original sample, flipped it this way, flipped it like this. This one's kind of fun, I like this one. And then this is with a sample. Baseline. got to shout out other sample makers um so we have i just put out a pack with fui who's one of the best producers ever we did a sound blocks pack and i'm just gonna grab some drums from that this is like my favorite loop <laughs> The other packs that are amazing that you guys should get if you don't have them are Pockets packs. Pocket has a textures pack and a drums pack that are really good. Yeah, these are so good. Cheat code. <laughs> So even though we, we didn't even really write chords here, we have just like a structure of an idea um, and something that you could like try out vocal ideas on or send to a vocalist or bring into a session. Um, 
And obviously we have also just like the different texture samples that we made, um, the original, and then the flip of that, this version. So this is a really nice way to just like resample yourself and find kind of like infinite creativity from like one source basically. And it starts off a little tedious. Like it took us like 30 minutes to kind of arrive at that basic one, but you just think of it layer by layer, right? You're starting off with just like a pedal tone, holding one note, and then just kind of like getting deeper and deeper with that. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple of questions right now um, if you guys have any. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you an example of like a finished song that I have that kind of uses some of these techniques and like has texture stuff layered in. Um, how do you make drums, synth, or record real ones? I just use samples for the most part. Um, and I work in audio with drums for the, for the most part. So yeah, just a sample, a sample user. Um, when I make drums for my sample packs, I uh, use a program called Kick2, which is like a drum synthesizer to synthesize kicks. Um, I don't, I don't want to get, like get too down the rabbit hole because, uh, this is, this is a texture workshop. I feel like someone else is doing drums. Um, but I also love Ableton's built-in drum synths. Uh, they have like a clap and a kick and a sampler, um, that I really like using. Um, and then I use, sometimes we'll use addictive drums for stuff as well. Um, tips for unique vocal processing. Um, I'm not the person to, uh, I'm, I'm probably not the guy for that because I, uh, suck at, I suck at singing and I suck at processing vocals, but, um, this is what my vocal chain looks like. It's just like a gate catching the noise floor, um, auto tune slammed because <laughs> I, I got that bad voice, uh, pro Q. Um, that's just ducking the mids, um, a de um, and then the R compressor. My friend Adam Turtley helped me build a lot of this because he's the goat and his voice is amazing. Um, but uh, someone else uh, just did a Bitbird uh, vocals, like working with your voice workshop, and she did a fantastic job, so you should go watch that. Um, cool. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, so that's kind of the process. I start off with pedal tone, just like holding a note around the root of the key. Um, I layer in some like ambience, nature texture. Um, I add like a broken or like unresolved melody. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the basics of how I, how I build texture ideas. Um, I'm going to show you how uh, I used this process in a song. Um, so I'm going to show you, this song is called No Sense uh, with my friend Andrew Bates. It was on my debut project that we did um, put out last year. Um, advice for smaller artists. Okay, uh, Enrico, I'm going to come back to that. I'll do that one at the end. I'm going to do like a general Q&A at the very end. So um, that's a great question though. Smaller artists, how to promote themselves and their music. I'll rip that one. Do you use the microcosm often to create textures or is it just exciting during the first few weeks? No, I've actually, okay, I've been using the microcosm quite a bit. Um, it's really fun. Uh, it's easier to do what I'm doing in the box, like in just in Ableton a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of things I've been doing with the microcosm, one of them the main thing that I do with microcosm, I actually just did like a TikTok about this if you want to see like the full process, but there's a program, there's a phone like 
phone DAW called Oxy, A-U-X-Y. Um, it's like the silliest. It's like it's a video game. It's like for it's for babies, but I absolutely love it. And I've been making these little. This is what Oxy looks like. And I've been making these little melody ideas on Oxy. And then uh, I have just like a quarter inch cable um, that I would use the MIDI clock to sync to have the microcosm sync in Ableton. No, I don't. I kind of like having the microcosm, like I will tap the uh, pedal to make sure that it's like in time with whatever my project tempo is. But in my opinion, it's like if you're going to use hardware, it doesn't have to be hyper synced with like your DAW and like your tempo of your DAW. Like it's actually kind of cool to have the whole point of using hardware is you're trying to create a more like mistake human sounding sound. That's you use hardware because you want more human sounds in your music. So I like to have stuff like kind of unsynced. But anyway, I've been Oxy is sick. If you guys want to try it, uh, I'd like love that app. And I've just been like running that through my microcosm and like recording these like really long jams. Um, I can probably show you one of those. Uh, I'll just pull one of those up after this. Um, cool. So <laughs> thank you. That's very nice. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, basically like what I did. This is like a more expanded version of the process that we just did where we like started building a texture and how I use that in the context of a, of a song idea. This song is called no sense with Andrew Bates. I'm just going to play it through and then I'll walk through the process. <laughs> song no sense with my homie andrew bates shout out to scottish legend andrew bates the goat um and this song had a couple different versions um but the thing that i wanted to highlight in this is using what we just made like a, a texture idea in context these are all of the layers um i have like some some kind of bird ambience. I have a drone, a drone that's just like descending. I have a resampled version. This is the first vocal that Andrew sent me over. I just resampled that and made a little chop out of it. But in, but instead of like having that be like the chop, like that's the same, okay, drop, sample chop, it's like just tucked. It's like EQ'd like this. And there's another one. That's just kind of doing a rhythmic like, da, 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 da. it's doing like what the drums would do it, tonally. And then just little plucks. This is a labs piano. Another layer of a labs piano that is, I like to do this a lot, pitched up an octave and left in like beats warp mode. So it sounds kind of, sounds kind of raunchy. And then some little serum.
I have no idea. I do not remember doing this at all. This is some. This is a freak show, actually. I have no idea. I I guess it's a serum patch that I put thermal. It's just a little sine wave plug. It's got like thermal shift. Oh, it's shifter is taking it up another octave, which is what's giving it that really weird sound. Oh man, don't don't process your stuff like this, you guys. This is disgusting. Sorry, I'm catching up on chat. Um, you can stream more often from now on. Yeah, I would love to. This is super fun. I'm. Thank you for Bitbird, to Bitbird for having me do this. I like. It's been a while and I haven't streamed, but I love it. So I'm gonna get back out there, for sure. Um, so anyway, point being, this is. <laughs> This is all of the texture that is layered on top of the chord idea. So, so without it, I'll, I'll just mute Andrew for just a second, just so we can. Okay, so here's just the chord progression. And then this is with texture layers. So like, I, I don't want you guys to leave this thinking like I need to go and make a bunch of really complicated like stacks and layers on top of my songs because that's like, that's not it. I think simplicity is really important and having your core melody and chords be really strong is everything. Like, like a song for the most part can like, should be able to work in a context where it doesn't have like a million layers. And if the you don't have the million layers there, the song doesn't work. So I don't want you to get that impression or idea. I think the point here is that just layering something that's tonal, that has interesting counter melodies and stuff going on, if it's done in a really subtle way where it acts as um, like ancillary to the main idea, it can be really helpful. I think like, Again, thinking of things as like a room. The texture ideas are not the couch or the carpet or the lamp. The texture idea is like the lighting or the room like temperature or like, you know, the feel of the room. So, um, but yeah, this is like sort of some context for what how I use this in like a final song. There's solo. MacBook specs, it has to burn down with all the serum instances. Yeah, this I, I made this on my old MacBook, which was like a 2017, and uh, it was overheating for sure. Um, throw a bit cr crusher on the birds. <laughs> oh, I never thought about that. That's nice. Um, kilohertz reverser and pitch shifter can help get the timbre as well just learn okay cool i've never used either of those but that's a good that's a good tip um have you got any processing on the master this is actually so for this project i worked with uh my friend to do like a stem master of these um shout out to chopso uh, and so this isn't the final mastered version. I actually, this mix is like, okay, but Chopso's final version is way better. Um, but yeah, I'm, this master is like really slammed. I actually would never, I made this like a year and a couple months ago and I don't think I would slam this hard, but it's a glue compressor, uh, and fab filter pro L. Oh, actually that's not that bad. I thought it was worse than that, but yeah, just a glue compressor and fab filter is kind of like. Tying the things together here. But yeah, there, there's a lot going on here. Um, and it's just trying to. 
Just a lot of call and response is kind of like the uh, proper way to export your stems. Uh, there is no like, I mean, it depends on who, what, who you're working with to mix and master your stuff. Um, this is how I've been grouping things. I just do a chords group with basically everything, a vocals group with all the vocals, um, and then a bass group, and then a drums group. Uh, actually, the drums group is separated out into like kick, snare, and then hats and other stuff. That's because I've been just getting stem, like they're called stem masters done, um, where I'll just send off those five and they'll take those five and, and mix them down essentially. Um, it's, I mean, to me, I have, a, I usually have a mix at like 90 or 95% of like where I want it to be, or I try to, um, so that I don't want, like, I don't want to give someone like full stems with, especially this, this project's a behemoth. It's like hundred plus. So, um, yeah. Um, cool. I wanted to show some context. What else were we going to talk about? I'll, I'll talk, I'll show you one example of a, um, maybe I'll show you an example of a, um, of a microcosm texture session. Um, I'm not sure if this one's gonna be any good, but hopefully it is. This is the first jam session I ever did with the microcosm. Um, and again, I think this process, like when I first started jamming out with the microcosm, the microcosm is this pedal that um, someone asked about. Uh, it's really fun. It's just like a weird granular uh, effects pedal and you can run, let's see what we got going on here. You can, I, I, I think this is going to be my Casio SK-1 and my mini log, I think. <laughs> didn't realize that was going to be like a full beat, but there you go. Uh, yeah. So this was when I first got my microcosm pedal, I was playing around a lot with, um, I think, I think these are all, these are all, uh, sounds that I played on my, uh, SK one. Um, and just like really tedious process of just like recording little jams and uh, running them through the microcosm. And yeah, nothing's really synced. Like everything is really weird and free flowing. Like I can show you the original. This is the original like full jam for this one. I'll put it back in its original pitch because I pitched it up an octave. So yeah, just like recording really big, long jams and kind of cutting them up. Uh, this one sounded like... That's the same one. I know there's another one in here that I used. But yeah, just very tedious, but fun, like kind of... A lot of that is just playing really simple melodies on the SK-1 and just fiddling around and um, yeah. And then switching through, like cycling through presets on the microcosm. Um, but again, if you guys don't have, like don't feel like you need hardware or gear to do this either. You can do this, I could do this right now all with stock Ableton stuff and just go, um, I'm just gonna pull up wavetable and pull up a new MIDI, command shift M, new MIDI channel. And then just like put 100% wet echo, 
on it. Um, do it in F or do it in uh, A major, which is our key here. And and then I could print all of these and then I could run them through a granulator. You know, you can do like, you can approximate what's going on inside this machine. Uh, with, with everything that you have in Ableton. So, um, cool. Uh, this was really fun, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for coming. I hope this was like interesting and informative. I'm gonna spend the last part of this uh, just doing Q and A from you guys. So um, yeah, thank you so much. This was super fun. Um, free VSTs for creative effects. Yeah, I think uh, just using delay and reverb in your DAW in, and putting weird settings on and tweaking your settings, like even just echo, there's like so many ways to get interesting sounds out of 100% wet, ping pong, messing with your output and slamming it, uh, you know, automating. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I'm like over here in... in where you guys can't see it. Um, even in like, this is Ableton stock echo. You could do this with any other echo plugin, right? Um, just like automating reverb, automating the dry wet, automating your left, right panning. Volume warning, I'm so sorry. That was loud. Oh, I'm making, I'm making the bird sounds now. Um, but yeah, there's like so many ways to get, get creative with this. Um, any tips for your, okay, cool. So someone asked getting your stuff out there and heard, I want to make sure that that's the, uh, same question as earlier. Um, Cool. Uh, getting your stuff out there and heard, I would say like now for you, it kind of, it totally depends on where you're at in the producer journey. So I'm going to speak to like the beginning, like let's say you're less than a year into production. Um, I would say like lock in with a community of people that are like at the same, in the same place as you that are learning music also that are like trying to make similar stuff or like making music that you think is interesting. Right. Um, and, uh, just like locking in with those people, like this is, it's a really long like journey, like the, the music career and like your development as a producer. And there's like, I was like talking about this on like on TikTok the other day, it was like the, there's like the stages of like the cycle of producer. You start out you think everything that you're making is amazing. You're like an amateur, but like, you're literally like, oh, this is awesome. Like, this is the best thing ever. Like, I'm gonna send this to people. And you're like DMing like your favorite artists and like sending them like tunes and stuff like that. And then you go through this like crash where you're like, oh, you kind of realize that the stuff that you're making is not as good as the stuff that you like or whatever. You go through that like little crash cycle. And then you, and then it's like a really like long, like multi-year process, like getting out of that. So, um, I would just say like right now, if you're new in production, I would say just like find a community of people that are like at the same place as you and like work with them because they're going to keep you inspired. They're going to keep you motivated. Um, and like listeners and like fans and like people that like like your music like that stuff's gonna come once you're like ready and making good music I know that's cliche and, and like annoying to hear but it, it really will like people will find your music if it's good and you're like doing any sort of effort to like promote it it's going to happen the more important thing is like finding a community of people that are like pushing you and keeping you going and like inspiring you um so that's what I would I would say for like getting your stuff out there and heard um obviously do all of the things that you can do <laughs> to promote your music as well. Like post on TikTok, like you don't have to go super up outside of your comfort zone, but no one's going to hear your music if it's just like 
being uploaded to Spotify and kind of sitting there. So, um, are you going to buy more hardware stuff or is this enough for now? I, yeah. So I've got like this, uh, I have a mini log. I have an SK one. I have a microcosm. I don't know. I, I, someone was like roasting me on Twitter the other day for, for gear acquisition syndrome. So I want to be careful about getting new stuff, but there's so much stuff that I want. So, um, I might get something new soon. We'll see. <laughs> Bryce, I don't see you can hate from outside the club. <laughs> that was a look at me now type sound. I'm trying to make some. I'm trying to make some uh, look at me now type beats. Um, cool. I'm. Do you guys have any more questions? Hopefully this was cool. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. My name is Demo Tapes. Um, I'm a guy, I make music and it's, it's on, it's on Spotify and stuff. And I post a lot on TikTok and I'm annoying on Twitter. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys, see you guys out there on the internet. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.